The following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for the Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technician Hour. This is the Monday edition, Monday, July the 8th. And my pleasure. I hope everyone had a very good weekend and a great July 4th. And uh, <clears throat> thank you, Steve, for kicking us off today, starting the show on TFNN, all those programs that come on, starting at 9 o'clock Eastern Time. Steve Rhodes kicks it off, two hours, great two hours, of course, with Steve and his different techniques. And then we've got Larry Pesavento, who comes on right at noon when I'm done. We've got uh, Daryl Martin. You've got Dave White. Monday, you've got 4 o'clock till 6, Tom O'Brien every evening, 4 o'clock till 6, Tom wraps it up, gives his views on the market, just fabulous programming. Now, this is so interesting. Spent some time over the weekend doing a lot of things, <clears throat> thinking about uh, chart formations, thinking about um, what does this really represent? Why is it that I just back in Brooklyn again this weekend? Why is it that there are people using their bodies as if for body art? Some of the designs are absolutely magnificent, so intricate. But there is life after a tattoo. And there are changing wars, the changing times. And when you've got an arm that's completely covered in, in uh, tattoos, especially the very dark ones, or as I saw uh, one young man, he had basically changed, taken that arm and turned it uh, black with one or two white stripes, uh, just skin stripes that is, and um, I said to myself, this is what an era we're in, and I'd spoken about this quite some time ago um, at the uh, it was then called Investors Business Daily Meetup here in the Boston area. And I discussed this and I said, in different ages, we've done different things. We've done different things to our body, different things to our hair, all sorts of things. That, that if you look back at photographs, you say, oh man, that is so 1920s. Oh, that is so 1890s. Oh, that is so 1970s. Oh, look at Gramps with that long hair. <laughs> back in the 70s um, but when it comes to permanent permanency let's call that that is making a statement a really bold statement and that can only happen in a certain period and I've spoken about this many times that there's so much reminiscence of the 1930s song Anything Goes called Porter um, I, I have to I have to suspect that this is a fashion, I, and this I spoke about in great detail um, at a, different, a couple of different meetings, that at some point when, the, when the, the norm changes, and we don't know why it changes, and we don't know, there's no, there's no, um, this is not moralizing, I have nothing to do with it. I mean, some of these designs are, I look and I'm absolutely in awe of the detail and, and the care. I mean, there are some tattoos you say, wow. Were they sober when they made the decision? But these are the ones that, you know, uh, are decorative to the point where they are absolutely artistic. Uh, instead of wall painting, instead of, uh, uh, you know, doing uh, the, ki the kind of paintings out there in public, in public places, it's all become body art. And it's, it's absolutely a fashion. I have absolutely no, to, to, to my mind, if I was to be able to invest right now, um, long term, I would absolutely be investing in the, the folks that, in fact, there's a word for it. I can't remember the word. I read it just recently. A whole bunch of parlors have opened up here in the Boston area um, to undo, to de-tattoo, to uh, undo the tattoos. Because, you know, it's fine for a particular time, but uh, you, you, you change, things change, morals change, attitudes change. Uh, in another five years' time, six years' time, seven years' time, eight years, nine, ten, what happens when things change? Well, you have to change. But I've been looking at it as a phenomenon that says, I'm in the moment right now. I'm doing this because I want to do it. But there's also a back backup that goes with it. 
and the backup is your friends, whatever it is. So I want you to mention this <clears throat> in terms of, once again, absolutely there's no moralizing whatsoever. Everybody's free to do whatever they want. I just has nothing to do with me. I'm only looking at as the kind of phenomenon I look at as I've looked at since the age of four years old. I've looked at <clears throat> design. I've looked at trends. I follow these trends, and I've seen them them rise and fall. I've seen them come back again. I've seen them fade. I've seen them disappear. And I'm just saying to myself, what, with such a bold statement, what is it saying about our society? And I think the only the only thing I can come up with is that it says, I'm totally comfortable in what I'm doing. Uh, sometimes people are pressured for other reasons, but uncomfortable. And um, attitudes about anybody be damned. And I'm saying to myself, wow, that's a pretty strong straight statement because there's a whole lifetime with these people still to come. So I'm fascinated, and it's going to be a period. I read somewhere that up to 40% of people between the ages of was 18 and 34 or something like that um, have uh, tattoos. So this is not just a you know kind of a one-off thing. This is something that, that people are doing, doing it seriously in many cases. So I wanted to talk about it in terms of the market. Now, how on earth does it fit into the market? I'll tell you how it fits into the market. There is such an overwhelming, remember I have spoken about this for some time, that I believe that the labor statistics, the, the statistics that are coming out from the government are completely wrong, they're completely skewed, and that there is actually a much like, you go to Spain, and you see people working, you see people enjoying themselves, you see people buying, and, and you say to yourself, 23, 25, 28, 35, 40 percent unemployment in certain sectors. Whoa, 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 where? I mean, who, what? Well, there's an underground economy, or it's an economy that's not being uh, 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 um, officially recognized. And I think that's exactly what's happening here. So when I'm looking at this and I'm, t I'm saying to myself, okay, what is happening in the market? I believe that there are a lot of people now that have decided to make trading a full-time job. And as such, I, I'm not going to talk about volume in the traditional sense. I'm going to talk about the, under, the undercurrent volume. And that says to me that there are a lot of people that are working this market very hard. And actually, I wouldn't be surprised if many of them are actually doing very well. This is different to how it used to be. Why? Very inexpensive trades, a lot of information. If as long as you don't get yourself overwhelmed by what people are saying and you think for yourself or use technicals that you've learned and improved on and, and, and repeat those things over and over, I think it'll be very good. So I'm going to set this as a stage for what I'm going to discuss over the coming week. And while I'm talking about over the coming week, I'm going to be introducing some other uh, ideas in my market trends watch section, uh, the, the part that I always talk about that I used to actually have, um, uh, not a publication, it was part of my, my daily publication. And I, I'm going to be just talking about these things because we are getting to a point where I know that there was an article yesterday, some guys talking about 100,000 on the Dow. Hey, I mean, who knows, maybe he's right. But... Um, you got to put it into context. And when I look at trend lines, I'm starting to, I feel, I, I, I might be wrong, but I feel I'm getting such a strong sense now of where we are and what we could do and what the levels will be to look at that it just, this is what I spent my weekend doing. And I looked at the repeated periods between trading ranges, 1960s, it was a period of 1970, remember Nixon, we broke out of the 1,000 level. Um, there was a period back in 1936, why did I look at 1936, 77 years ago? Fantastic performance by uh, Andrew uh, Murray. Um, uh, just, that was absolutely fabulous. Just, he walked on, you knew he was focused. You knew from within three, three strokes that uh, uh, Djokovic was just, he did not have that same enthusiasm, the same laughter, the same fun that he always has. Even if he's serious and gets angry, he always has fun. He did not have fun at all. 
and congratulations because 77 year drought has ended that's 1936 of course I had a look at the charts of 1936 there was some yes Dan there was some absolutely amazing points it was really it was it was even more fun than watching uh, back with Sampras and Sampras and <laughs> I always forget his name. You know, you know who I mean. Um, those two guys, they were absolutely fabulous. Um, so, now, let's go to the mark. Agassi, thank you, Mike. Um, so, we're looking at the E-mini having broken out of that pattern that I call the falling axe. This is just the start. I need a close, and I need to see that the night period expedition moving out of 16.13 on the E-mini, this is the September E-mini, is not only going to become support, I want to see it become... Um, uh, I want to see the stochastic from 64% go to 80%, then I'm going to be convinced, great, now we can retest the 1680s. Meantime, I'm calling this leg B, other leg Bs have failed, but so far it's very nice, very strong. I was a little hesitant to date, I was hoping to see the market actually be a little bit weaker at some point and then get strong rather than strong and then maybe get weak towards the end of the day. Hey, that's okay. So now the 120 minute chart is in leg C, I believe, I have to call it leg C, yep, leg C, and that should go to a D. But everything's pointing to a little bit of an overboard situation so that by tomorrow afternoon, I wouldn't be surprised if we start pulling back a bit. Now, let's go to the, real, uh, the, the indexes we need to look at. The Dow is up 93. 93 at 15,229. It attempted, I made a big thing about these techniques in the Chapman Wave that I always look at. And these particular techniques are, um, to me... Absolutely core to the to the umbrella name of the Chapman wave that I use, and in these particular instances, you look for a leg C, which go, get, gives you an up arrow. It can fail, but usually I'm going to go to an up arrow, meaning I should get to a leg D. But you see that trend line in the Dow from 15,442 to all the previous tops, the lower highs. Much lower lows. That says that the breakout here in this pattern that I call the inside track, the dashed line and the gray line, here the Dow needs to get to the 15,000. It really needs to spiral into the 15,300. It hit 15,260. Now it's at 15,227, pulling back after a pretty strong opening. But the stocks that are really important to me, like my Dow Quartet, GE, IBM, Triple M, and UTX, three of them are acting very well, and that is really important as far as I'm concerned. And the VIX index is um, right now at 15.13, underneath the turn period, moving average, lousy MACD and lousy uh, stochastic in the daily, weekly. Plunge below the nine period exponential moving average for a very sharp pullback in peak D that usually gives you a bit of time to the upside in the market as the, the volatility index starts to pull back. So one of the reasons why my opening call for subscribers, we only have long positions and we try to add to some we're hoping to add to some of the long positions. Very selective stock price movement and that's going to be very important. The Dow is up far uh, ten at uh, 18, uh, 1642, the comp index is up 5 at 34.85. Gold is up 22 after being smacked on Thursday, uh, Wednesday and Thursday. It's at 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, uh, 12.34. Silver's up 32 cents at 19.05. Platinum's up 34. And high grade copper's at 3.10. Crude oil is unch. And you've got bonds up 20, 30 seconds. Dollar is down. And I'll be back with, with our callers. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investment strategy. You're always looking for the next trading opportunity to magnify your perspective. Direction Shares connects sophisticated traders with a powerful array of ETFs from a wide range of asset classes. The markets may go up and down, and you want tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus can Contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors, employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC.
with the launch of Tiger TV. TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, David White, Larry Pizzamento, Andy Hecht, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. McEwen Mining is a high-growth, mid-tier producer in the Americas with a market capitalization of $1 billion. Experienced mining executive Rob McEwen, as chairman, CEO, and president, owns 25% of the outstanding shares of McEwen Mining and has put in place an ambitious business plan with the goal of qualifying for inclusion in the S&P 500 by 2015. With $70 million in cash and liquid assets as of the end of 2012 and completely debt-free, McEwen Mining is poised for growth. Production in 2013 is forecasted to grow at 24%, reaching 130,000 gold equivalent ounces. And over the next three years, McEwen Mining projects that their production will increase to 290,000 gold equivalent ounces, almost a three-fold increase from last year's totals. If you'd like to find out more about McEwen Mining, click on their banner on the front page of TFNN.com or check them out on the NYSE or TSX under the symbol MUX. Who says you can't take it with you? TFNN says you can. With your mobile device and TFNN's live radio streams, TFNN has put it all in the palm of your hands. No special apps to download. No subscription fees for live radio or Tiger TV streams. We say you can. Now let's go over to the dollar because the dollar is going to be the generator. It is the generator of basically higher dollar, lower market. And what the dollar has done, and this whole uptrend, folks, has just gone sideways. The way it works, folks, is this. We say you can. The Tiger Financial News Network. Smart investors and professional traders know you can. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Basil takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians Hour. And uh, let me see. We've got a bunch of callers. We've got uh, waiting in line. We've got, let me just find, ah, oh, Freeman. Hi, Freeman. How are you? Uh, Freeman, you there? Uh, let's see. Freeman there. Freeman in Dallas. Freeman, just jump in and say hi if you're there. You wanted to know about, I think, about the... Uh, Freeman, you there? Yes, sir. I'm yeah. How you doing, Buzz? Good. How are you? Pretty good. Uh, Buzz, I was trying to, um, to start oil yeah, on a bounce using a SCO. What do you think about this? Well, if you look, I'm going to, if you don't mind, I'm going to use the USO, which is the United States Oil Fund LP. I find that it gives me pretty good and pretty accurate uh, um, a representation of the SCO, although I probably should use something a little closer, uh, well, a, a little bit more defined. So the, S, the USO is trading at 36.44, and it's down 12 cents. If it doesn't make a new recovery high above 36.59, Today, this is going to be peak C. I would expect one more pop-up above 36.59. That's number one. But the strength of the weekly chart from last week is just powerful enough to say to me at 83% in the MACD and, uh, sorry, 83% in the stochastic, and the MACD still being very strong with a strong histogram, that there's a very good chance that this week we're going to extend leg C, and that's going to take us 
possibly towards the high of 37.17, and that was the high way back in uh, September of last year. That's, that was a peak D as well. Now, here's the other thing. <clears throat> if you're going to short um, via the SCO by buying it, and the SCO is the ProShares Ultra Short uh, Dow Jones AIG Crude uh, e ETF. I'm not sure if it's an ETN or an ETF. I think it's an ETN, actually. Um, then you got to look at the, the exact opposite. The stochastic's at 6.39 in the daily, and the MACD is still expanding. The weekly has had a terrible candle from last week, and the monthly, I'm going to go to crude oil now. So just, just, I want to, they don't correlate exactly, but just for my sake, I want to get to the two of them. Oh, it wasn't CL. It's CL.C, I believe. Now, I don't even know if I'm right anymore because I've lost that chart. Uh, yeah, I think this is correct. So I'm I'm kind of liking what I see in crude oil. Now, what's interesting is if you look at the crude oil chart and you look at the DXY, the dollar chart, they're actually quite similar in many ways. Now, what's interesting is I recall when the dollar goes up, usually doesn't it impact oil negatively? Maybe, maybe yeah. not. That's what I thought, but not in this case. In this case, see, they seem to be moving together. So here's my thinking. I would wait a little bit on, on shorting the oil. I think it will be. It's due. Let me just go back to the year. So it is due for a pullback to digest this vertical straight line that has just been in since the low of the 21st of June. But... That's not a guarantee. Just because something goes straight up doesn't mean to say that it has to either come straight down or it even has to consolidate uh, for more than a high-level consolidation and it could even move higher. We've seen that in some charts. I would, If it happens in crude oil, now let me just go to the CL. I'm not sure if I should go to the Q or not. I'm just grabbing that. Yeah, I've got A, B. This is either F slash B in the daily in the crude oil. This is the uh, August contract, but it's his leg D in the weekly. I'm going to just just suggest hold off for the moment. I, okay. I think I think you have your eye on the on the right thing at least for a nice quick trade, but I would only treat it as a trade right now because the technicals in the weekly are still very strong. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna say leave it for now. We have to wait two days. If this is peak C, then it'll have to be uh, tomorrow. Tomorrow sometime we can look at it and see if it spikes to a new recovery high, if it doesn't do that today. Either tomorrow. When you see it break the high of uh, Friday in the USO, let me just type that in here, USO, USO. Yeah, if it doesn't do today, and I don't think it's going to from the chart pattern, although you never can tell, break 36.59 in the USO, that means if it doesn't do it today, we could do it tomorrow. So give me a call tomorrow this time, and we'll be looking at it, because if it's gone above uh, 36.59, I'll be looking at the 120-minute chart uh, in A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D, E. Whoa! Yeah, I think it's very close. It needs one more slightly, one by one penny, and we'll start looking at it. So hold off for a moment. We'll look at it together tomorrow. Or if you don't want to call me tomorrow, but you see that it's made peak C today, tomorrow goes about 36.59, and then starts to roll over, and the dollar's pulling back. Um, I forget. I'm not going to tie it together to the dollar. Let's treat it as crude oil, as USO, and if that starts to happen, you might want to consider a small position. Okay. Thanks, Mark. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you very much for calling. We'll be right back with Louis Fairfield, Connecticut. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts has officially launched at TFNN. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind software, the art of timing the trade charts allows you to scan for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, Butterflies, ABCs, and much more. The art of timing the trade charts is designed to help you when scouring the market for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, and even months searching to find. As part of our introductory pricing, we're offering licenses available at only $59 per month. We're so confident that you'll love this new outstanding piece of charting software that we'll even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. 
Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Lock in your low price today by ordering your copy at TFNN.com. With the stock market flirting with all-time highs and volatility back, now is the perfect time for a two-week free trial to Market Insights. On Monday, June 24th, Tom O'Brien closed out all five open positions in his daily newsletter, Market Insights, with all trades being profitable and ranging from a 2.23% gain all the way to more than an 11% gain in just one position for an incredible 32.7% profit combined between the five trades. Let Tom O'Brien's years of market experience work for you. If you'd like to see for yourself what kind of trading newsletter Tom O'Brien delivers to his clients each morning, then now is a perfect time to sign up for a two-week free trial to his daily newsletter, Market Insights. In a volatile market like we currently have, the potential for fast market moves like we've seen recently is a trader's dream. So don't wait any longer. Sign up for your two-week free trial to Market Insights today at the front page of TFNN.com. Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels, as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. This segment is brought to you by Harmony Gold. For more information, just click the Harmony Gold banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Everyone, Basil Chapman, we are back, and it's my pleasure to be here Monday through Friday, 11 o'clock till noon, Tiger Technicians Hour, 877-927-6648. Don't forget, great program all the way through the day. Let's go to Lou in Fairfield, Connecticut. Hi, Lou, how are you? How you doing, Basil? Long time no talk. Long time no talk, but I did drive by Fairfield <laughs> on my way. <laughs> you, I, anyway, to, if, I gotta put a plug in for you, Basil. I've been listening to you since day one, and you've been absolutely terrific. Thank you. You know that, right? Thank you very much, I've Luke. Been, I'm telling you, right through the whole ball games, and this is not an advertisement, people. You listen to this guy. I listen. I cannot do your work. I have an IQ of 140, and I can't do your work. But I do my own thing. One day I'm going to come up and get one of those free seminars. That was out terrific of you. Giving oh, them out. Good. I, in fact, I'm thinking of, uh, of, of another one coming up soon. Uh, I've just got to try to fix the date. It's just tough to get everything organized. But thank you, Lou. I appreciate that. So what are we looking at? Basil, in the back of my mind's eye, you know, I lived through the 70s over here, and I had trouble like these young, children, young people do today with massive unemployment all through the 70s. Oh, you remember that? Inflation, high inflation, uh, in fact, great I'm time thinking, to buy real estate. And I'm, I'm thinking that 
something, you know, with all these bubble, with all these people trying to be Lawrence Welk, making all these bubbles all over the country, <laughs> something bad's going to happen. Just like it did through the 70s. Went up, made, tested the highs, and then came right on back. Okay, I was so, just wondering if that works fits in. If you used any of that into your, you know, how you look at the market, because you've been absolutely terrific being a historian, and that's the guy I got to talk to. So okay, let's do a couple of things here. I, in fact, I think that um, I think, in a sense, I can start to talk about it. I, I have already, but I'm going to try to introduce it every week because this is not something that I'm expecting to happen just in one sudden swoop. There are a couple of things. Number one is everything that I'm looking at in every sector, and it really doesn't matter what it is, whether it's automobiles, whether, whatever it is, is going through a phase that in, in my mind's eye I have to put together with everything else I've ever looked at, it's, it's now become extremely complex, but over the weekend it just became absolutely so simple I couldn't believe it. And I, I go back to uh, reading books, I'm trying to think of the guy's name, he was a commentator um, back in, oh, I can even hear his voice, he was a radio commentator, I, I never heard him live, I only heard uh, recordings of him, Haywood, Haywood Brune, that's his name. Um, and he used to write these columns, and he wrote about the 30s and the 40s and the 50s. And I, I remember getting a sense, historical sense, of, 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 of what I call the tide in every, every aspect. And what we're looking he to, together here at is, if you are looking at real estate, if you're looking at automobile engine size, if you're looking at the same historical context of a turn of the century every single century for four or five hundred years in the in the eighties to the nineties of the previous century there are new technologies that take whether it's electricity or automobiles it doesn't matter what it is we had the last one was the whole high-tech high era, era and that becomes you go to the Eastman Kodak I remember being at Jacobs Pillar the dance complex out in the Berkshires uh, about five years ago and uh, with a with some friends and we were looking at they they showed the they had film from the 1890s and the 90, early 1900s that they had just gotten it was they were hot off the press of the dance complex and what happens is you start and you, 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 there's something that is so dynamic, something that had never been done before. After that, there are only variations. Video is a variation of film, uh, even though it's a different technology. But you, I've spoken about the Apple, the, the, the iPad, even the little the iTouch, whatever those things are called. You could never have got that, just as, uh, because you had to get the glass, you had to get the speakers, you had to get the microphone, you had to get the, the, the whole digitization, all of it at the same time to be able to put it together. The same as Otis Elevator, the Empire State Building couldn't have been built without the Otis Elevator. The Petronas Towers couldn't have had that incredible uh, elevator system and the, the dynamics of the, uh, uh, of the shock absorbers without the technology coming exactly at the same time. Sometimes the architects like uh, uh, Frank Lloyd Wright who designed his Mile High Building are early and it, you have to wait for everything to come together. And I think we got these things coming together. And, and when people used to say to me, oh, we'll never, you know, well, I used to say, we'll never see ele electric cars. It'll take 30 to 40 years before electric cars, no matter how they invented it, whatever they do, I'm talking about purely electric cars, because to get the infrastructure until you can press the button, start it, Whatever it is, on a computer, whatever, just you press a button and the layperson can use it. And even then, there are little technical problems that occur, but it's the simplest that it's ever been that takes 40 to 50 years to produce. Now, I've said that. Now, if I look at charts and I say to myself, okay, it's enough with all that yakety yak, what is the implication? What, what can you look at when you're looking at chart formations that say, hey, this is a period that is an amalgamation of a whole bunch of periods. There are even signs of the 1950s here. 
And I'm putting it, trying to put it together, I'm trying to put it together as a market scenario. And to me, every one of those things that I've spoken about will come to a head at some point. I mean, I don't see how in the Boston area, when I'm getting uh, 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 in the mail, not every day, but very a lot of of a real estate agent saying we've got people your house is exactly the house that i've got clients looking for well to my recollection uh, looking at having bought and sold houses uh, over over a number of decades i'm saying to myself the northeast has to be making a top over the next when i come from brooklyn and brooklyn major blocks that were just Dead for 40, 50, 60 years are coming alive. They, they, there are no buildings there. There's just an empty hole. When those things come online, which will be later this year and early next year, my suspicion is we will be making some kind of a major top in the northeast in real estate. Will that be part of the market? Well, now let's look at the market. So I've got in the Dow, I've got peak C in place. There's nothing else I can call it. And everything about the candle that was made last month, the long-legged doji candle, not quite a doji, but long-legged, says that in July, a close, it has to be a close, about 15,340.09, last day of July, says immediately there's a really good chance that we're going to take out the high of 15,542.40. That'll start leg D. Leg D in the Dow is not the end of, uh, of, of it all because we made a peak D back in February of 2007 at 12,795. It then went on for uh, right until October before it made F. And I don't see any reason why at this particular point I cannot anticipate that the only thing that is the most important aspect of what I'm looking at on my charts, and I'm going to squash this chart, if anybody's looking at Tiger uh, TV, you will see that the peak that was made in 2000, in January of 2000, I remember the Dow made its high, I think it was January the 14th, something like that, and it was March before the NASDAQ usurped all of the Dow's material and saw money flowing into the NASDAQ like we've never seen before at major tops. And that went on March, uh, in March, the S&P and the, and the NASDAQ made their high. Well, that, there's a trend line, a beautiful trend line that goes from the high of 2000, oh, well, I said 11,700 and... Uh, 49, let me put that in, 11,749, 11,749, and that goes to the higher, 14,198, it's only uh, 3,000 points higher, well, 2,500 points higher, it doesn't, it sounds like a lot, but when you're talking about um, this number of years, uh, eight years, it's not that much, and that trend line goes right where to, it goes to this area uh, of 16,180. Let's call it 16,100 to 16,250. That would be a target area for this particular move in the Dow. And at that point, I will have to see how the technicals are performing, how my Dow Quartet, GE, IBM, Triple M, and UTX are performing. I will have to see how the NASDAQ is digesting huge gains in some of their top stocks like a price line, Google, Amazon, etc. Whether they are having a breather at that particular point or they are participating. My suspicion, and boy, I could be so wrong about this because the IWM is actually the leader here making all-time highs even as we speak. 100.44 is 22 cents, if I'm not mistaken. 22 cents. So this is like E. Uh, 100.38, no, it's 130, it is, oh, six, six cents above the previous high. This starts leg E in the monthly chart, but my suspicion, and as I say, I could be off, just completely wrong, is that the Dow this time is going to careen to the upside. And that's the area. So careening says if the Dow is right now in the 15,000s, what are you talking about careening uh, when we've only got a thousand? Uh, what have we got? A thousand points to go? It's nothing. A thousand points. Uh, it's it's not even what four five percent, seven percent for the Dow um, to get to that 15 to the 16,200 area. Well, if it takes that resistance out. 
that's where I believe the money that has gone out of bond funds into some form of cash hasn't yet found it. I don't think it's found its way into the stock market yet. We'll see whether that can take us to the next level. But my target right now is that leg D will start at about 15,543, and that's going to be really important. If it happens really quickly after peak C, I have to be a bit careful, because a quick peak C to D says, ah, you've got to be careful. You get some pretty big uh, sell-offs after D if you go there very quickly. So I'm trying to put that particular uh, uh, aspect together, as well as the aspect of the I, um, the... Uh, IYC, which is a consumer cyclical, is breaking out. <clears throat> I have to give it an alternate wave count using my instant restart, the Chapman Wave instant restart from peak D back in February the week, the February the 15th, 2013. This says it's either leg C right now. It could be a G, but it could even be a C, A, B, C. That should still go to a D, and we're at all-time highs in the iShares Dow Jones U.S. Consumer Cyclical Trust and I can't, why I'm forgetting it right now, what is, uh, someone help me, what's the symbol that I always use for the, um, for the I, uh-oh, I'm forgetting it, the one that I use, I think, oh, it is an IYC, yeah, it's an IYC. So, if that's making all-time highs, I have to put that together with what I'm looking at in the IYR, which is a different thing altogether. It is the iShares Dow Jones U.S. REITs Index, made up of mostly commercial but different kinds of commercial activities, as well as what I'm looking at when I go to the HGX, which are the home builders. And in both those categories, there is a timeout that is occurring right now that is really important. I've got a peak E in the weekly chart of the home builders. I've got a peak D in the um, Philadelphia housing sector monthly chart. And it's been a fantastic run for the bottom at 54.31, but it was at 293.66. So this run to 210 has actually been very good. But how it, the, the housing sector behaves is going to be very important. So I think we're coming up to some really important data, price points, and performance records for different uh, metrics that the government uses for gauging uh, um, all sorts of things, the most important being jobs. And I think that they've got it wrong. That, I, and you know, I'm not an economist, and I'm just saying this, a guy from Newton, Mass, who's never done an economics degree. Well, I've done economics courses, but not an e economics degree. But I'm just saying, I think they had, they'd be measuring it incorrectly. That's what I believe. So, okay, Lou, your turn. I, first off, you can't go by the government numbers because they... They tweak them so many times, they don't tell you the truth. They don't know which numbers are the numbers. Sit their own lies, and they're believing their own lies. You know, I can't, they, I can't believe, you know what I mean? That, yep, that's yep. how long it's been going on. We've got the worst unemployment since the 70s, and I tell you, it takes years to get a job. Plus, nobody's getting raises. You know, right. it's, it's awful, and... and and the market making this high over here reminds me of the high like in 74 and then it pulled all the way back, you know, into 76 or 77. And then it took off again after they straightened this stuff out. That was yeah, Lou, yep. there's something that I haven't discussed yet, and I've been talking about it for a very long time. As always in the public domain, and especially yep. with young people who get very excited about different things but don't always think things through very clearly, the one percenters are not the bankers, etc. The real one percenters are the government and federal workers who are going to get 80% of their last three years, their best pay that they always squeeze the daylights out of, and they go through the last three days and they get an incredible amount. I'll be back with Lou straight after this break. Recently, Basil Chapman has had some outstanding trades in his newsletter, The Opening Call. Each morning by 9 a.m., Basil uploads his newsletter to the TFNN servers so that his subscribers can access his expert trading advice. Basil gives his take on the direction of key indices and updates any active trades that his subscribers are currently in. Just recently, Basil's subscribers closed out a short position in Chipotle Mexican Grill, CMG, for more than an $86 product per share, over a 20% gain in just one position. 
If you'd like to try out Basil Chapman's newsletter, the opening call, then visit the front page at TFNN.com and click Trading Newsletters. There you'll find Basil's newsletter, the opening call, where you can request a free sample copy. Also, don't miss Basil's program, the Tiger Technician's Hour, Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern on TFNN. Tom O'Brien's weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, has helped subscribers for over 10 years navigate the high-risk world of exploring and producing gold companies. And now's a great time to sign up for a free month-long trial to see the kind of insight that Tom delivers for his subscribers on a weekly basis. Every Monday, Tom O'Brien issues a quick update on the metal market, giving you his take on the HUI, XAU, GLD, dollar bonds, and much more. Tom follows Monday's update with a full gold report which is delivered to subscribers Tuesday afternoon with detailed coverage of 24 separate gold or metal stocks as well as another 10 to 15 stocks that he lets you know are on his potential watch list. Get your month-long free trial to the gold report today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Don't spend another year navigating the metal markets on your own. Act early in 2013 and make the most of your gold and metal market investments. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Hi, folks. I'm Steve Rose with TFNN.com, and the trend is your friend until it changes. A free special report is now available on the homepage of TFNN.com, and if you have money in the markets, this free report is a must. If your strategy is buy and hold, this report is a must. If you're a day trader, a swing trader, a forex or options trader, or just getting into the markets, this report is a must, and it's the second best gift you'll ever receive. Look, if you buy a stock and the general market is trending in the other direction, you've reduced your odds of buying at the right time by 70%. Instead, let me teach you how to get that 70% advantage plus. The plus is a free trial to my daily newsletter service, Mastering Probability. There's no upfront deposit, no charge to your credit card, and I can press decades of education into each daily newsletter. This is a limited time offer, so act now, and I'll teach you how to take the trend and turn it into your best friend. All the details are on the homepage of TFNN.com. Act now. This segment is brought to you by Backtech Environmental. For more information, just click the Backtech banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman. I'll be on with Lou. Lou, I just want you to, I like to always give the other side of the, of the coin here. If the Dow at any particular point starts to break down, and it, uh, I, I would give it a little room, but it's not just breaking down. It will be if the Dow starts to tank and it drops six or 700 points, and it does that, say, within the coming from, from today or, or within the next couple of days, going into... Uh, the end of next week, if, it, if that occurs, it's how the volatility index, I'd spoken about this a long time ago in terms of what I look at, and I hope it helped uh, people because I had said, as, as, as for my work, if the volatility index starts to climb again, it starts to hold in the 20s, I'm talking about holding on a closing basis on a Friday, holds into the 20s, like a 22 or something, and the market has actually pulled back that 500, 600, 700 points. I have to consider that if that volatility index starts to climb at any point and it climbs into the 20, even 24 area, this market is coming down hard. But even then, all that I can consider is that it's going to be a great buying opportunity and only because I need to see leg D 
in the uh, Chapman Wave in the monthly chart and the S&P as well. So I hope that helps you. Basil, everything you point out is absolutely terrific. There's one wow. more thing I, I got I to gotta throw into the mix. In, in the 70s, I bought a real good car for $3,500. Today it cost you $35,000, 40 years later. I tried to tell my children you got to get good jobs because when you're my age, the car's going to cost you $350,000. Something like that. For Unless you're like me and you always buy second-hand cars. I refuse to put good money into a devaluing commodity. I'd rather put it into art. But that's the way I am. So thanks so much for calling, Lou. I appreciate it. Always. Love you, Basil. Love you, too. Thank you, Lou. So Bye -bye. let's just do this. I buy it. I've got Tizu right now. I had an email from a uh, subscriber. Tizu, which, of course, is a travel, uh, travel zoo, Inc. It is uh, a, a website giving you information on travel. Um, I love this. This is leg B in, in the daily chart. I've got a squash on the weekly, on the daily chart uh, between the MACD and the stochastic, but it really needs to clear the double top of 29.80, and right now 29.50 is the high. I like it. I like it on the weekly. How it handles the resistance coming up is going to be very important. I've also got that doji, long-legged doji candle, that long-legged doji candle from the week of the 24th of May. That says no matter how much you close above it and how much you go below it we've already gone below it you're coming back to test the wick which is at 28.83 so it can go higher but at some point it's going to come back and test 28.83 i love it right now if you're long just have one position where you're raising the stop and when it gets to if it goes to a new recovery high start lightening up a bit because if it goes to leg d in the next uh, three to six sessions i can't be three in the next five to six sessions then you want to be thinking maybe that it could pull back raise the stop on some a part of your uh, position the other thing was t tbt i will spend a lot more time to tomorrow on TBT. I've got TBT in peak C. I gotta double check that, but I'm almost sure it's in peak C. That says it should go to leg D above 77.59. See how it's tying together? We had a Freeman call about the US, uh, about uh, SCO, which is 200% short. I'm using the USO because that's the chart pattern that fits best. And the USO is also probably at peak C and needs to go to leg D. And I've got the dollar DXY at this particular point in leg D. But the stochastic and the MACD are the dollar are fabulous. Look at this. 93% and flattening out. That's what you want. That's like that upside down chart when the stochastic was at 5%. Uh, uh, what, what chart was it? Uh, we were looking at uh, of the SCO. So now this is different. I like this. The dollar's acting very well. It should pull back. 84.21 on the index. 83.49 is very strong support. Wow! That was a quick hour. Thanks for being here, folks. Much appreciated, and um, don't forget, my service is the opening call. You can get it on the front page, uh, two weeks free, if you go to the front page of TFN. Love for you to check it out. Stay tuned for Larry Pesavento. Should be a great show. I'm just dying to hear what he's going to be saying about gold. I'll be right back tomorrow at this time. Patterns, profits, and peace of mind. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's trading newsletter, Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two full weeks. That's an $85 value. Yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind. And get the edge you've been looking for.